Karsten, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me here. It's uh, an amazing, amazing environment. I feel so much energy. I uh, really love to be here. The energy is terrific. Um, you know, just, just uh, I, I want, you have such an accomplished track record. I wanted to briefly go over it just for the audience's sort of education. You know, so as many of you already know, Carson Breitfeld is co-founder and CEO of Byton. Before that, he spent uh, 20 years at BMW where he was group vice president, leading corporate strategy, chassis development, and powertrain development. Um, and last but certainly not least, Carson, you're also head of BMW's illustrious I-8 vehicle program. So I want to talk, you know, moving on to, to Byton. You know, first and foremost, you are developing um, at least for now, three, pro three prototype cars that are first and foremost autonomous driving and then also happen to be electric vehicles. For, for people in the audience who, who aren't, who, how would you say Byton is different from the competition, from the rest of the pack? Yeah. So I think we have to differentiate between Byton and the traditional car industry on one hand and Byton uh, in the context of the other new players on the other hand. Um, what is important to understand, we are not talking about electric cars here, or at least we are not talking only about electric cars. There would be no reason at all to set up a new company, a next company to develop and produce electric cars. There are so many out already, and all the traditional companies at the end of the day, eventually, they will be able to build electric cars. But that's not the point. New technologies are coming up, like high-speed connectivity, new user interface system, and AI for autonomous driving. And this will not only change the, the, the product, it will change the business models, because uh, the, the car will, will become a smart device on wheels. The money will not be made any longer just by selling cars, but by selling digital data based on this platform, and at the end of the day, by becoming a provider of, uh, of shared mobility. So the money will be earned by selling miles and kilometers and, and, and not so much by selling cars. So how are we different? Um, all the traditional car companies will be able to build electric cars without any doubt. But um, they, might be, they might do hard to convert the business models because they have these organizations of hundreds of thousands of people which are trained for 100 years to build, industrialize and sell cars. And this is where a new company can, can do something different, build it from the right technology right from the beginning and build it around those new business models. And if you compare to new players, and Byton has a slightly different approach. We are a global team, we have a global product. So we will launch in China by end of next year, but we will go to the United States in 2020 and in Europe. And this is different from, from, from other startup companies, which are much more focusing on local markets and are not, not going to be premium. So earlier this year, Byton raised a $500 million Series B funding round from Fog Group and, and other investors as well. Um, can you walk us through what, that, what the new round of funding will be used for? Another yeah, point is um, if, you, if you want to set up a company like Byton, um, it, it, it's, it's a smart device on wheels, but it's still a car. And unfortunately, it takes a lot of money to um, uh, develop and industrialize a car. So we are talking about billions. Um, the good thing is, uh, in China, you find an environment where things are moving quite fast, where people have a lot of visions and dreams, where there's a lot of money around to invest in early stage companies, just in, in ideas, in market potentials, and, and, and in teams. This is the reason why we founded the company in, in, in China, uh, and why we get in mainly Chinese money uh, up to now. This will change a bit in the future. We are just kick off our C round fundraising, we try to be a bit more global uh, uh, when it comes to, um, uh, to, to capital in our C round. But up to now, it's, 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 it's mainly Chinese due to the facts I, I just described. Now, um, if, you, if you position such a company, it's not, on, not only about money. You need money, but you need strong partners. So in the first funding round, we, we got the, the government from Nanjing in. In, in China, it's very important to be connected with the government. The second round, we, what we just closed, FAW, First Auto Works, came in, which is a very strong foundation in China when it comes to supply chain, market power, resources. And now our next funding round, which we just kicked off, we are looking more for a technology giant. So this would be a very good portfolio, having strong technology partners, uh, strong partners from automotive industry and government connections. 
about it. I mean, so you've raised a, a bunch of money, but it's also my understanding that Biden is trying to be more financially conscious. Is that right? For example, um, the, the three models you guys are working on, they all use the same fundamental platform. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I have to be honest, it's not invented by us. Uh, the traditional car industry is, is excellent today in platform technology. But it's right, if you want to conquer, if you want to raise volume, it's a new brand, you will not be able to sell 300, 400,000 cars of the same model in one year. So you will have to come up with a technical platform, share 60, 70% of the parts across different models, and just build different top hats on, a, on the same technical platform. It's not invented by us. The traditional car industry really is excellent in doing so. But for whatever reason, all the other newcomers, they never applied this. And uh, if you look to Tesla, for example, they did the first model, develop it, spent a lot of money, sell 50,000 units. And the second one, the same. It will be very difficult to get profitable if you, if you do it that way. So we try to incorporate the excellence of the premium car industry right from the beginning. This is our foundation. And then on top of that, building the smart part. So the, the, the guy who's heading uh, our user experience team, our, 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 our user interface team, doing the big screens and the architecture, he's coming from Apple. So he's creating this smart device, atmosphere smart device experience for the user. If you ask car people to come up with a new user experience, it will not lead you very far. You better don't do this. So you have to adapt consumer electronics and, and internet industries uh, style of thinking. Do you have a, a visual of what the of what the cars look like? Great. Well, I think you might see it. <laughs> I cannot see it from here. The pictures uh, behind me. These are our first two models built on one technical platform, as I just lined out. So on the on the left, you see the M Byte. It's an, an SUV. We uh, showed this car. We we, lo we launched this car. We introduced it at the beginning of this year in Las Vegas on the CES. Um, it's a modern and very pretty uh, design of an SUV, having a lot of space inside and a new concept I'm going to show you in a second. And the second one on the right side is a pretty new interpretation of a sedan. Now, a sedan in, in principle is a very boring concept. It takes something to, 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 to make it uh, sexy again. And I think our head of design, Benoit Jacob, did a quite good job. There's a second message with this K-Byte. Um, the K-Byte will go to the market with level 4 autonomous driving. will be our first product with level 4 autonomous driving. And the interesting thing is if you do level 4 driving, then you will have a lot of sensor technology. And you have, have to ask yourself, do you want to hide it or do you want to use it as, an, as a design language, design equity? And uh, obviously, we, we, we want to use it to, to show it, to differentiate the cars. Because and if you look to today's design language in cars, there are some elements like, for example, exhaust pipes. If you have one only, not so great. Two, better. If you have four, really top car. Um, if you look to the air intake, the bigger it is, the more air is going in, the bigger is the engine. This, this is all design semantics, which will not be useful any longer in the future. So we have to create something new. And in the future, it will be about smart surfaces, Com communicating with the, with the outside world. It will be about sensors, cameras, antennas, showing I'm connected, I'm smart. And this is what we try to do uh, with, with, with this K-Byte car. How would you describe that? I mean, you know, we're looking at these, at these cars. They're very, very futuristic and slick looking. What, is the, what was the sort of industrial design inspiration behind that? Yeah, if you, um, even if you do smart device on wheels, it's still design is very, very important. And um, uh, to, to, to find the right sweet spot for the future, you have to find a combination of being modern and being, still being beautiful. And this is not so easy. But what is easy? Being classic and beautiful. There are a lot of examples outside. And it's easy to be modern and polarizing. You find some examples like Faraday and others outside as well. You might not find so many which are modern, but still beautiful. And, and, and you, you will need this kind of beauty to, to sell it in, in, in bigger volume. So we're looking at this visual right now, and I, I, the most prominent aspect I'm noticing is this huge dashboard, this yeah. huge display. Um, can you talk a little bit more about what kind of information or content could potentially be surfaced on that display? You mentioned um, sensors, for instance. Health data seems to be one aspect that could be uh, surfaced. Yeah, so first of all, our, our uh, approach is creating a smart device on wheels. Means 
You have big screens, one very big screen for every passenger in the car, and then a smaller screen as an individual digital experience for every passenger. Um, this means a complete user experience can be done by software. It can be configured and it can adapt to the user. It's not, it's, not, it's not something fixed, but it can be updated with new functionality and will adapt to the user. It's something which gives you a very interesting uh, chance for a shared mobility approach because we have a face recognition camera. Uh, this face recognition camera recognizes the user and then if you want, your, your whole configuration, your smartphones, your music, your videos, your, 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 your health data, if you want, everything is stored in our Byton Live Cloud. So whenever you enter a Byton, being it in Portugal, in San Francisco, in Beijing tomorrow, you enter the car, it will recognize you, and it will download your personal configuration. And every Byton car you enter will feel like yours. And now transform this into experience like you have with Uber or Didi today. You call your car by an app, but the difference to Uber today is if you, if you call a Uber, you get something that's not, not a great experience, just a car. In our case, you will get something which will be yours because you enter and it feels like yours and everything is, 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 is available. This is breakthrough technology uh, and, and, and we think this is um, uh, the, the, the precondition to make shared mobility work. Um, this gives you an example here just to, to cover maybe more aspects um, how we see the interior and the user experience of a car. We, we see it more as a, we call it a digital lounge. It means you have all those screens, you can rotate the front seats here by 10 degrees, which gives you much more comfortable sitting position and it opens the view from the rear seats to the big, to the big screens. Now, you ask about the content, what are you going to see? We are going to have the whole ecosystem you are, you are used from your smart devices in our car because it's a smart device on wheels. So it will be Android based. You will have access to all Android apps uh, you, you, you can downloading from, from, from the stores. And there will be some very specific apps customized for the big screens. And this will be entertainment. It will be work. It will be health. We will have sensors for, blood, um, for, for oxygen, if you want, for blood pressure, for weight. And I think we have an example here uh, as well showing this. Got it. So I, I, I know one major component of Byton is around partnerships, for example. Um, there's a partnership with Aurora, which provides software. Um, you also have a partnership with FAW, which was announced um, earlier this year. Um, given Byton is based in China, could we potentially see partnerships with major Chinese uh, software providers or companies like your Alibaba's or Tencent's of the world providing content? Now, the, the first question is that you have to choose the right strategic approach. But um, in, in the traditional car company, it's very common that the companies try to do everything, the whole vertical chain by themselves. They build as engines, they build transmissions, they build prop shafts, they build uh, uh, plastic parts and seats. Yeah? And if you, uh, first of all, this might or might not be intelligent, but um, if you try to copy this approach into, a, into the smart world, when it comes to innovation cycles of nine months in consumer electronics, you will be dead. So the only way to make this happen is to understand yourself as a configurator of the product and the integrator. You have to do the, the design, it's important, you have to do the integration, but then you have to, 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 to have strong partners, strong partnerships and integrate the latest technology which is available uh, in, in the market. This is true for technology. And this is more true even for the ecosystem you want to play on your car for the content you are going to offer. So as you said, we, we have partnerships with, uh, with Baidu in China when it comes to voice control, autonomous driving. We have a partnership with Amazon, we use Alexa for the Western world for voice recognition. A partnership with FAW on, uh, on, uh, on, on, on more industrialization issues. Uh, I think it was shown in this last video here. Um, we have a partnership with, um, with Huawei and uh, integrating smart watches to our car. So, uh, and we are building step-by-step step this ecosystem with, for technology and, and for content. Got it. Uh, I know one of the many goals um, is to enable level four autonomy for your cars. Um, and to clarify, level four autonomy is, is um, full self-driving mode in certain situations or conditions. Yes. Um, how close are you to achieving that? And to clarify for the audience, what are some of those conditions what are some of those scenarios where level, where level four autonomy kicks in and where it doesn't kick in? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. We can talk about this for the rest of the day here. Um, because 
there are so many aspects on it. Yeah, you know, there are, there's this level uh, description, level three, four, five, and people are asking many times, when will level four be, four be available? And um, it absolutely depends what you mean by this question. If you would say, when will it be available under every condition and everywhere in the world, the answer will be never. At least I'm absolutely convinced. Um, if you ask, um, when will it be available under specific conditions in some pilot areas, then the answer might be in 2020 or 21. This is what we're heading for. Mm -hmm. So basically the roadmap is our first car end of next year will have level three autonomy. This is something like um, gives you full autonomy on highways, but you still have to be prepared to take over in a certain period of time, let's, let's say in, within 30 seconds. Uh, the really interesting thing is level four then, where you really can rely on it. But you have to, um, uh, to take into account, this is not only a technology issue, it depends from legislation and it depends from, from, from the environment. Um, I like this example, if you, we, we could build a level four car today, or at least close, maybe 3.8 or 3.9, using Google technology, a lot of money. If you put this car in the middle of Beijing, it will never move. It will stand there around for the whole time because everybody will drive around it and it will just not move because it has to be very different. It will start to move if 10% of the cars might be autonomous and, 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 and connected and it, things will become interesting if 50% will do it. So what, what is the way forward to make to, to do this? You will not be able to sell cars where the technology costs $50,000 to come to the scale. So at the end of the day, it will be a compromise between functionality and cost uh, to, to make the whole ecosystem happen. So we will see maybe not level four, but 3.8, which means under certain conditions and in, in, in certain environment, uh, but this will be more than enough to, to, to start the whole journey. Got it. So Series C uh, fundraising, uh, a rollout of cars to 2019 to 2020 from China to US to Europe. What else can we expect from Biden moving forward? So the next step is our first platform is still car. So we have five-seater and seven-seater cars. It will be, it's available for individual use. You can buy it. You can operate it in fleets for shared mobility. Now, the next thing we are working on in our a future lab in Los Angeles right now is a platform which is purpose-built for shared mobility. If you look to statistics of Uber or Didi rides today, you will find that 60-70% of the rides is only one person in the car. So a product to serve just shared mobility will look different. You might have still a space for the driver, or you can maybe can reduce the driver mode, you put a computer in both, but you will have space for one passenger only in a very, very luxury style, like, like, like first class in an airplane. It's an excellent user experience, and there might be a chance to add a second person and then compromise both a bit, but it's one plus one, purpose built for shared mobility, an outstanding new user experience. This is what we are working on in Los Angeles right now, and we will show it to you uh, within the next year. Great, I'm sure many in the audience are looking forward to it. Carson Breitfeld, CEO and co-founder of Byton, thank you so much for your time, really appreciate it. It's thank you for having me here. Thanks. Thank you.